Hello guys, welcome back to the Vintage Room, and today I'm going to do a short little video to just show you kind of how things have changed around here, and um, also show off these vintage speakers a little bit. Now, first off, I'll start by saying that I completely redid my setup for um, several different reasons, uh, mostly because I keep acquiring things to put in it. But anyway, as you can see here, we've got the Pioneer front and center, and I finally got the turntable off of it so that you can see that beautiful finish. And then the uh, one of my new thrift store finds, this Technics CD changer, and it works very well. Um, the tray opens and closes and spins around great. So yeah, that works very nicely. The only problem it seems to have is um, with every once in a while it'll do some skipping in CDs and they're, you know, good quality CDs and everything. Uh, so it, it could be a laser problem, tracking problem, something like that, that you would see in an aging CD player. Uh, but I can... Most of the time, I can play stuff just fine with no problems. And uh, picked it up for 15 bucks. There was actually two of them at the thrift store, like identical, stacked on top of each other. And there was also a matching equalizer, which I almost picked up, but decided not to. Um, and then the next time I went back to the store, both of them were gone. So somebody must have gotten a hold of them and is appreciating them also. Uh, and then here's my infamous MDP-333 Sony LaserDisc player that's still working strong and doing great, which is uh, pretty amazing considering that I'm the one that replaced the laser pickup on it. And then up here we have the uh, turntable which I currently have going directly into the phono stage of the Pioneer because I decided that I wanted to keep everything in this chain uh, period so that it also works well with the, uh, the old speakers. So pretty much if you're listening to a record on here, you're getting 100% authentic 70s sound, which you know, might might be your thing or might not be, but I, I think it's fun. Also, here's my, my nice VCR, which is giving me problems with the audio track. I'm probably going to replace it soon uh, and retire it for now, unless I can figure out how to fix the audio track. Uh, the hi-fi crackles when it's on, um, and I've cleaned it. I, I did a full open it up and clean it. Uh, as per internet instructions, and it still crackles. Picture's great, though. Um, and then we have my tape deck and the wood grain PS3, which I couldn't find room for, so I decided to do that. And um, these sources either feed just audio or audio and video through this old switcher. So uh, the LaserDisc player and my Raspberry Pi get a direct composite feed to the TV. So there's nothing interfering with it in the middle. Now the speakers were uh, fined for about eight bucks at a thrift store locally. And, you know, they're really not bad. They're like, of course, they don't sound like a modern speaker set, but... That's not what I wanted. I wanted it to sound old. Uh, it has just a basic paper driver and no tweeter. And it certainly sounds like it. I opened it up and stuffed it full of polyfill, and that really improved the sound. And I'm just going to play you a few examples of music playing from the Technic CD player over there. Uh, from the, audio, the YouTube audio library. And you'll you'll see what I'm talking about probably. Um, just remember that it's being compressed and uh, played back through your speakers, so it's not 
very authentic, but it'll give you an idea of what they sound like. So what I would describe the speakers as sounding like as kind of an grungy, boxy sort of sound. Uh, and there's definitely no highs because there's no tweeter. But it has a very, you know, authentically old sound to it. And I mean, I'm sure these were bargain bin speakers back in the day. You probably get them at Radio Shack for, you know, 30 bucks or something. They're not as bargain bin as those, because those really are Radio Shack speakers. They look pretty, but man, they sound terrible. Uh, but these are decent. Uh, you can you can hear a little bit of highs and some some lows. And you know, I just the other day I put on some high res um, Jimi Hendrix music, and man, you talk about transporting you back to the '70s. That will do it. So I like that. Um, I'm thinking about maybe eventually getting some nice speakers and putting them like up on the shelf somewhere. Maybe up there and up there. And then I'd be able to uh, keep these here. And then I could use the speaker switch A and B to choose whether I want grungy old timey sound or crystal clear modern sound. That's my uh, plan anyway. And of course, these speakers do not handle much power. I think they're like 8 watt max or something. And the receiver can do about 40, I think, RMS, if I'm, if I'm correct in that. Um, so yeah, if, if I crank the volume up on this, I would probably blow them apart. But that's okay, because I don't crank them up very much. Just uh, decent levels, nothing extraordinary. Uh, and anyway, we got some more stuff going on down here. Of course, you probably remember the uh, my from my last video, my my double switcher for component video and audio, and then also the uh, DVD recorder. Which right now, it, um, I stopped feeding things through it because I noticed it was giving things kind of a a blurry haze. So that's why I decided to put everything direct into the TV itself so that I wouldn't get any of that. And then here's my Sega, which I've been resurrecting. And I'm going to do a video on that, detailing uh, some more of what I've been doing with that, but it's uh, really cool. Well, that's going to conclude this video. I just wanted to uh, give you a brief tour of what's been going on here, as I've been... I spent, like, way too long one night just in here routing cables and switches and arranging things because I'm nuts like that. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll stick around for the next video which should be coming up soon. And until next time, see you around. <laughs>